Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. So today I'm going to talk about why the quote unquote progressive entertainment system that you see everywhere around you today is set up for destruction. And by that, I mean, when they make something, when they make what they consider entertainment, it isn't a mistake. It isn't lack of experience. And it isn't ignorance on their part. When they make something, it is to destroy the thing that they work on. And I talked about this a little bit in the past, but in terms of the political or the philosophical. But today, I'm going to concentrate on the art itself. And I would classify any media that you take in as being tied to art in one form or another. And yes, it is, as I said, meant to destroy. But if you're looking for something that is looking to create, you might want to click on those links either in the description or on the pinned comment. There are two links for my three graphic novels, two superhero graphic novels, Thomas Valiant and The Valiant Heroes, both of those available at the Valiant Hero Indiegogo page. And they are stories about individuals who are seeking to be heroic in a world that is anything but. And the other link is for my return to form for low fantasy called Crom the Destroyer. It is about an aging king who wishes only to die an honorable death on the battlefield, but gets caught up in something much larger than him, and then must struggle to survive in order to keep that honor. And you're looking at some of the beautiful art from those books in the background, so if any of that looks or sounds appealing to you at all, click on those links in the description and go on over and order yourself a copy of one of my graphic novels today. All right, so as I said, I want to talk about this in terms of the artistic. And in order to do that, first I will need to define art as it is defined rationally and logically by the logician himself, Aristotle, over 2,400 years ago, when he said that art is the ability to take an idea in your mind and to translate it into external matter. And the closer that you can make that external matter into the form that you have in your mind, the better art it is. But at the same time, the backstory argument to that is that your mind needs to be in accord with reality. That is to say, to run according to right reason. Why? Because in order to create something in your mind that can be translated into external matter, which is subject to all of the rules of reality, you must first have an imagination that is shaped by that same set of rules of reality. And as I said, that comes through right reason which is the exact origin of not only a really correct understanding of reason and logic, but also the idea of a hero that I'm always going on about. Now, we have to compare that for one more minute, because I've done this in other videos, with postmodernism. Now, I did this this last week on my Wednesday live stream. I talked about this exact thing, but just in connection with comic books alone. And to sum up, really, in just a couple of sentences, that argument it basically goes like this. Comic books are a modernist way of thinking. They adhere to a modernist mentality. But when you introduce postmodernism into the creation and the running of the entire thing, you destroy the comic industry. Why? Because modernism, not to be confused with the theological definition of modernism, that's not what I'm talking about here, but modernism was in part a reaction to what had come before, which is the ancient and medieval periods, shaped partly by the Industrial Revolution and partly by Renaissance thinking. Now, I'm not a big fan of Renaissance thinking, but I'll leave that aside just for the moment, except to say that I think one of the flaws of modernism is to build their argumentation and their way of thinking around the idea that there is something true, good, and beautiful, basing it upon the ancient and medieval ways of thinking, but then discounting any spiritual connection to those things. I think that's a problem with modernism, but again, I'll leave that alone for today. But there is something good within modernism, honestly, and it came out of the Industrial Revolution, even though that's a strange place for it to come out of. But the Industrial Revolution really showed people that they needed to strip things down to the bare minimum, the absolute bare minimum, and then go back to the core essentials of what a thing is and proceed from there. And really, this is what I would say modernism did in expressing itself in something like comic books. Before that, you had art, which you wanted it to be as perfect as possible. And if that took you all of your life to complete, so be it. But with this idea of, you know, the printing press and 
the assembly line and all of that kind of thing, you introduce ideas like deadlines. And all of a sudden, if you want to get this art done and tell this story according to the artistic standards that, yes, need to be there, connected to reality, and selling it to your audience so that they understand and appreciate this two-dimensional representation as a three-dimensional representation in their mind, all of that needs to be there. But you need to strip it down to the very bare minimum so that you can crank it out month after month after month. And going back to essentials is a good thing. And that's what my argument is, that that's what comic books did in an artistic sense. And so it was very much a modernist industry. And when you injected postmodernism into it and then overlaid it on top of everything within comics, which is what you have right now, it destroys the entire thing. Because modernism is contrasted with what came after it, which is postmodernism. Now, I know these terms are going to get a little bit confusing because there is an overlap of terms. Quite honestly, what I would say the quote-unquote progressive industries and quote-unquote art that you see around you today, although most people would call it modern art or something that is akin to modern art, it would actually be better to call it postmodern art. And I did an entire video about postmodernism about a month and a half ago, two months ago, talking about multiverses and how you're going to see more multiverse stories. So if you want my entire argument on that, you can go back to that video. I'll try to remember to link that in the description. But for today, we're just going to talk about postmodernism as being simply a rejection of everything that modernism is. And since modernism was built upon the older ideas of the ancient and the medieval, it's also a rejection of those ideas as well. But here's the thing. Postmodernism doesn't set up any new dynamic to say this is what we should do instead of these old ways of thinking. It simply says everything that came before us was wrong. We give you no alternative as to what is right because postmodernism doesn't see there being any such thing as the true, the good, the beautiful. Therefore, it is a rejection of truth itself, which is a irrational way of thinking because, of course, if you say there is no such thing as truth, you're stating that as if it were true, and then that therefore defeats your own argument, and thus any statement that there is no such thing as truth is an irrational statement. And I suppose I should interject here and say that what I'm doing here is I'm describing this entire thing, including postmodernism and the way that it works, according to reason and logic. That is to say, in a rational method, even though the people who make up and believe postmodernism don't actually think in a rational way. So there will be some seeming contradictions in this entire thing, because, of course, they don't think rationally. One of the hallmarks of their way of thinking is not to think rationally, but to think emotionally. And that would be one of the rejections of modernism and what came before it, is to reject the idea that things really can be rationally understood or rationally categorized. But the whole point being that since postmodernism is simply a rejection of modernism and everything that came before it, and it doesn't have anything to stand on itself, all it is is an attempt to destroy all other ideas that came before it. So to explain this, let's look for a second at what people call modern art, although it is really postmodern art, where you have art displays that are things like a banana duct taped to the wall, and that's supposed to be art, or a urinal in the middle of the museum, and that's supposed to be art, or the much more offensive taking a crucifix and suspending it in a tank full of urine, that's supposed to be art. There was actually a funny one, I think, in France about a year and a half ago, where it was supposed to be a whole bunch of trash littered all over the place in the corner of the museum, and the janitor actually cleaned the entire thing up, thinking it was just trash. But yeah, that was supposed to be art. But the question is, why do they consider such a thing to be art? Well, they consider such a thing to be art because it is a rejection of all that has come before. It's saying that all of those things that you considered art based upon the true, the good, and the beautiful, they're not really anything at all because I can take a bag full of garbage and just throw it across the floor and I can call that art too. And if that is equal to all of those things that you previously thought were art, depending upon those ideas of the true, the good, and the beautiful, well, it destroys, in the minds of these artists, it destroys the idea of any art being based upon the true, the good, and the beautiful, because that's what postmodernism is. It is a 
attempt to destroy what has come before. And on top of that, you have to recognize that all modern art, which really is postmodern art, also incorporates into its artistic display a form of, some more, some less, but a form of performance art as well. But here's the thing. The performance part of the performance art is not really done on behalf of the artist himself. It is how the people react to this piece of quote-unquote art that is in the mind of these artists meant to be the performance part of the art itself. And being postmodern and irrational, it is meant to provoke a emotional response, either from the people who agree with it and say, yes, yes, I can see how this is art and destroys those ideas that all came before us, or a negative emotion in the people who actually believe in things like the true, the good, and the beautiful, and try to dislodge any idea of the true, the good, the beautiful from their minds by saying, you know, I'm disturbing you, I'm making you emotionally upset because this is just as beautiful as, let's say, the Mona Lisa or the Sistine Chapel. Now, I realize that most of the people who make our entertainment today probably don't go that deep into it in their own minds, but this is exactly what they're doing according to their progressive ideology, because it's a progressive entertainment system that is based upon and connected to postmodernism. And this is what they do when they write a television show, write a movie, write a comic book, write a novel. And it doesn't matter what they're dealing with, although they will seek to deal with the most impactful thing that they can get their hands on. So again, this encompasses pretty much everything that I can think of. Certainly there might be some exception. I can't think of one, but it encompasses Star Wars, Star Trek, Doctor Who, Lord of the Rings, Marvel Comics, Baldur's Gate, everything and anything that you can think of. It is encompassed in this postmodern kind of art. And so these storytellers and producers are producing something which is in accord with those postmodern sensibilities of art. So if you've ever asked yourself after watching a show about, I don't know, The Wheel of Time or The Lord of the Rings or anything else from Marvel Comics to these new diverse, and I put that in quotes, diverse showings of Shakespeare, and you say to yourself, why in the world would these people make such a piece of garbage? I don't understand why they think this was worthy to put out into the world. Are they that stupid? Are they that inert? Are they that useless? Do they not understand the basics of what they're trying to do? But here's the point. The point is they understand exactly what they're doing. Now, again, on some level, some more than others, but they understand what they're doing is destroying what came before. That's the point of postmodernism. They're taking this thing, which people saw as being artistic, connected to ideas of heroism, truth, beauty, and purposefully dragging it through the mud and destroying it in whatever way that they can think possible, in order to reject the ideas of modernism and the precursors to modernism. And just like the people who create those modern art sculptures, again, being postmodern art, really, what they're trying to do is to provoke with their destruction an emotional response either to the people who agree with them or the people who don't agree with them so that they can show every one of them that there is no such thing as what is true, good, and beautiful. This piece of art is worthy of being called art as much as anything in the past. So again, this performance art piece is in some way connected to our reaction, our emotional reactions to these destructions of these properties. And all in all, you might say to yourself again, but this thing that they're putting out is a piece of garbage. It isn't real art. Well, it's because the thing that they're putting out, whether it be the show or the comic book or the movie or the game, that's not the actual piece of art that they're working on. The piece of art that they're working on is the destruction of the idea itself and your reaction to it. That is their canvas. That is their piece of art. Now, does this mean that we should stop criticizing these people? We should stop having reactions to all these things that they do? Well, in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. I'll get into that in a minute. Because I want to concentrate on another point first. And that point is the fact that when you have something, no matter what it is, that's simply and purely only a reaction to something else, 
when that something else is destroyed, then it destroys itself as well. So, if postmodernism is simply meant entirely to destroy modernism and what came before, if they manage to destroy modernism and everything that came before within the culture, then it too, postmodernism, will cease to exist. And this is where there is a bit of a tie to the political, and I'll try to be as brief as possible with this, but there is a actual tie here. It's very much like what has happened with quote-unquote liberalism over the last, oh, about 500 years. Now, as I always say, the initial ideas of liberalism, that is to say to liberate us from what was basically nostalgia to things that weren't true, yeah, that has merit. But it quickly got degenerated into an idea that liberty at all cost enabling its adherents to do whatever they wanted whenever they wanted to do it. Which isn't liberty at all, because if you do something that isn't in accord with reality, reality is going to smack you to the ground and you're going to be less free. But that's really the point. The point is that this corrupted liberal ideal, for hundreds of years now, has operated on principles that don't actually play out in reality. So if you ask me as a student who has degrees in history, political science, political theory, philosophy, how in the world did it manage to last these last 500 years? Well, it's a very neat trick that liberalism plays. Because liberalism is sort of like the equivalent of postmodernism to modernism. Liberalism is just a rejection of the conservative way of thinking. Again, the corrupted ideal that originally took over this entire way of thinking. And again, it doesn't base itself on anything real. Therefore, it keeps itself afloat by stealing the power of others in order to support it. And how has it done so over the last 500 years? Well, it does so by pitting in the minds of the regular people a pitch battle between itself and its enemies. Originally, this was conservatism. It said, those people, those monarchists, or people of that like, they're the enemy. We need to defeat that enemy so you can do whatever you want to do. And the only way that we can do that is if you give us your power. And once you give us your power, we'll be able to do this. But really, they're asking for that power, not so they can change things, because they know that will eventually lead to their own death, because they're only a contrary, a contrarian way of thinking, but simply to ingratiate themselves and keep themselves afloat with that power. And so after several hundred years of actually fighting with conservatism, monarchists and the like, when they eventually defeated them and that enemy was neutered, well, they had to find new enemies. So what they did at that point was they broke liberalism up into its various iterations and then warred amongst itself so that they could continue in each place and time to tell the adherents, yes, we still have an enemy. There it is. Give me your power. These things were broken up into ideologies like anarchism or fascism or communism. And of course, the one that we live under, which is Western liberal democracy. But here's the thing. And this happened when I was studying in a post-secondary way, political science itself. With the end of the USSR, there was politically and the political sphere, especially the political theory sphere, this idea which basically showed Western liberal Democrats as having drunk their own Kool-Aid. There was a rejoicing, a jubilation at that time that pervaded all the way through the biggest thinkers of political theory, basically saying that Western liberal democracy has now won out over all of its enemies. The entire world will now become a Western liberal democracy. And yes, using terms like the new liberal world order. I think it was Clinton that actually used that term, Bill Clinton, back in the 90s. And they thought, they thought that they could still exist in that way without having any enemy anymore, because they had then won over all of these other ways of thinking. Yes, there were a few things they needed to clean up here and there, but they were the victor. And again, this was heavy and important political theorists saying this, people who controlled the field. And what happened? Well, people began to wake up because they didn't have a boogeyman to fight anymore. And they started to think to themselves, you know, I always thought we were on the right side, but I don't really like where this is going either. I don't want to be a part of a liberal world order. How's about we go back to more traditional ways of thinking? 
something based on the real. And that's the origin of all of the political strife that you see around you today. Because this mentality started to grow and grow, and they tried to step it out at every turn. And it wasn't until the election of Donald Trump, and it doesn't matter whether you like the man or not, he was an avatar, as it were, of this entire thing to show the world that, yes, this movement of going back towards more traditional ways of thinking has actually got some legs. Because the most powerful political office in the world was now controlled by someone who wanted to give the people what they want rather than tell the people what they want. And what you've seen since then is a desperate attempt to try to set up some kind of faux boogeyman in the background saying, this is our new enemy, so that they can convince you to once again go back to giving all of your power to them and they'll take care of things. You just don't worry your pretty little head. Stop thinking about things too much. And I'm just going to break in here just for one second and interject this personally. I don't think that's going to happen. We've all seen that the emperor has no clothes. And honestly, what they're trying to do now is throw up the specter of a nuclear third world war. So we all better get in back of them and start supporting them. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, I remember the entire 1980s. During that time, we were bombarded over and over again with every piece of media, especially movies about nuclear apocalypse. From the Terminator, to Miracle Mile, to weeds. I grew up fully expecting the world to die in a blinding nuclear flash before I was 20. So honestly, I've been there, I've done that, I don't care. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And that brings me back to the idea of art and what is going on with what I'm talking about. Because someone made a very profound statement. I'm not sure who it was. I think it might have been Richard over at Comics Matter saying that cancel culture is a participation sport. That is to say, if you don't participate with these people who are trying to destroy you, they have no power over you. Why? Because, of course, they're quote-unquote progressive people who don't have any power to begin with. All they do is steal power from others and then use it to destroy. Therefore, they're trying to get you to participate in council culture so that you give them your power so that they can use that power to then destroy you. But if you don't participate in this, you're fine. Sure, there's going to be some bumps in the road, but you're going to be fine. Why? Because if you actually do things in accord with reality, you're the one with the actual power. And that's the thing. That's why progressivism as a political movement is all about power. It all comes down to social exercising of power. And again, social exercising, that's a key part. Why? Because again, they got to trick you into following absurd social norms so that you abandon your power or give it up to them so that they can then use that in lieu of actually having power themselves, which they don't because they don't follow reality. And that's the exact same thing that these quote-unquote progressive people within entertainment are doing. They're playing a social, political game. And if you want some evidence of that, go back and listen to my videos about three, four years ago when I went over those Marvel podcasts where they would talk about power endlessly, constantly, again and again and again. This was the core of their ideological bent, which they then used to create their so-called art. And the reason, as I said, I went over that whole idea of the liberal world order that drank its own Kool-Aid in the late 90s, early 2000s, the same thing is happening right now within our entertainment systems. These people who control it realize a, well, first of all, they always realized that they can't actually destroy the thing that they want to destroy, because if they do, they'll destroy themselves. You see this with people like Ibrahim X. Kindi whose basic premise is we must get rid of racism, but then takes as a given an almost essential, and I would call it really essential part of human beings that you can't get rid of it. And he's just trying to trick people into fighting this foe that can never be defeated, which isn't actually real, so that they will give him money and power so that he can ingratiate himself because he has no real power of his own. And the reason I mention him is because he tied himself up with all of these entertainment systems. But yes, the entertainment systems are starting to realize that, A, they drank their own Kool-Aid. They believed that they could destroy this idea of modernism and still actually have a leg to stand on when they wanted to do something of their own. And they also, B, believed that they could abandon completely their entire customer base, not realizing that when those people go, so does all their power. 
And quite honestly, this drinking of their own Kool-Aid, I think, would be best explained by the fact that they believed that postmodernism and progressivism that is based upon postmodernism is actually in some sense true. That is to say, there is no such thing as the real. There's no such thing as a reality that we can base things on. Therefore, there's no true good and the beautiful. And so, under that way of thinking, there is no such thing as critical thinking. There's only critical theory. Critical thinking would be the ancient way of using right reason in order to understand the reality around you. Critical theory goes back to the precursors of postmodernism, which is socialist way of thinking, which is to chip away at something through criticism that is only ever negative until it is destroyed. So they believed that in our complaining about all the things that they were doing, our emotional response, which was part of this whole performance art of their postmodern way of telling stories, etc., etc., they believed that we ourselves were participating in the destruction of the thing we were trying to uphold because in their minds, since they were fooled by their own ideology, they thought that all criticism was only negative. Not understanding that no, there is reality, we can use critical thinking, and we can use criticism in an actual positive way, which is constructive. So long story short, they thought they were being contrarians and destroying all of these institutions of things like the patriarchy or supremacism of this race or that or all these other nonsensical ideas. They thought they were destroying these things through the presentation of destroying these old ideas that were represented in art in one form or another and causing us to emotionally lash out, which itself was a criticism which they only saw as negative and then helping destroy those things as well. While we, on the other hand, were actually engaged in constructive criticism and as they began, and still do, tear things down one after another after another, are starting to build up a actual culture based upon those old norms of the true, the good, and the beautiful that is going to obliterate the progressive way of making entertainment. Now, it may take some time, but it is going to destroy progressive entertainment. And I find the entire thing in some ways extremely funny, because, as you probably know, I'm a big comic book guy, and I remember a story from, I think it was the late 70s, in Tomb of Dracula. It was a Marvel comic, and it expressed a really Nietzschean idea. I guess it would be based on Schopenhauer as well. Their idea of there is no truth, therefore deaden your pain by creating things, and after you create those things, destroy them. But in this Tomb of Dracula comic, there was a cult. A cult who, if I remember correctly, eventually began to worship Dracula. And that's exactly what this cult did. These cult members would use all of their energy to create things and then get together in an orgy of destruction and smash and burn them all. And I find that story to be a bit prophetic because that's exactly what you see around you today. And it's the point of this video. All quote-unquote progressive entertainment is meant to create something so that they can destroy it and everything else that it touches. And there's no way to save it. There's no way. If this mentality of quote-unquote progressivism is left even in the smallest corner, there's no way that these systems can be salvaged. With all due respect to someone like Richard over at Comics Matter or Wes over at Critical Thinking who keep on waiting for Marvel Comics or the entire Hollywood machine to do an about-face and to have everything go back to the way it was, there is no going back. We must create something new. And you can call it Comicsgate, you can call it the new Iron Age, you can call it new modernism. It doesn't matter, because we're not sitting here navel-gazing trying to do the exact same thing that the progressives were trying to do with their entertainment. No, we've gotten down into the dirt. We've realized that it's going to take a long time with blood, sweat, and tears, but that we can indeed renew things by creating true art. So, if I've given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit the shield in the lower right-hand corner of your screen to subscribe, and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about all this, and don't forget, there are two links in the description and the pinned comment for my three graphic novels, my creation according to the old way of telling stories, rejuvenated by the here and now, 
And if any of that looks or sounds appealing to you at all, click on those links in the description and go on over and order yourself one of my graphic novels today. All right, I'll leave it there. I'll see you later.